All right, formula weights. How are we going to work? We've got we've got balanced chemical equations. We need to be able to work on our lab uh, station on a chemical equation. Now, it does not make much sense for us to work in terms of individual atoms. So we have to have some way to relate these individual atoms to a particular mass. Okay? We don't have an atom counter in lab. We have a triple beam balance or a an electronic balance scale that allows us to work with different chemicals in the lab. So how can we relate uh, the number of atoms to the mass of these atoms? Well, first we need to begin by understanding formula weights. Okay, A formula weight is the sum of the atomic weights which we get from the periodic table of the atoms in a chemical compound. So for example, I've got calcium chloride here. Okay, Calcium chloride is one calcium atom bonded to two chlorine atoms. We get the molecular mass in AMUs from the periodic table. Um, one calcium atom plus two times the molecular mass of the chlorine added together is equal 111.1 .1 AMUs. Now formula weights talking about one formula unit of an ionic compound. You should remember that ionic compounds typically start with metals and the uh, non-metal is its anion. And in ionic compounds, electrons are gained or lost. Okay, so when we're talking about one formula unit, one ionic compound, we're just talking about one little bitty calcium atom bonded to two chlorine atoms. Okay, very similar to that is the molecular weight or the molecular mass. So molecular weight is the sum of the atomic weights which we get from the periodic table of the atoms in a molecule, and you should remember that a molecule has a covalent bond, and in covalent bond, the electrons are shared. In order to have a covalent bond, you typically have um, two non-metals forming a bond, so they can share electrons. All right, for the molecule ethane, C2H6, the molecular weight, which would be this, we would break it down just like this. We have two carbon atoms, which we get from our uh, formula, at 12.0 AMUs, which we get from the periodic table, six hydrogen atoms, and we're going to take it, and we get this molecular mass from the periodic table, 1.0, uh, and we multiply and add those together, we should get 30 AMUs. Now remember, we're talking about one molecule. An AMU is a very, very small uh, unit for mass, but does it doesn't do much good to talk about AMUs in terms of the laboratory. But this AMU will help us relate it to a larger scale. Before we talk about um, molar mass, let's talk a little bit about percent composition. Okay, Percent composition is essentially trying, kind of saying what percent of this compound is this element. And we have a very nice formula that will allow us to uh, make that comparison. We take the number of that atoms present of the element we're interested in, Time the, times the atomic weights, which we would get from the periodic table, divided by the formula weight of the compound, which we would calculate by multiplying the, the number of atoms and adding them to the rest of the total atoms in the compound, times 100. That gives us the percent of the element. So an example problem would be the percent of carbon in ethane. If we were looking for what percent of this whole ethane molecule is, is carbon, we would work it just like this. We have two carbon molecule, I mean two carbon atoms present times their mass, which would be 12.0 AMUs, divided by the total mass, or the molecular mass, molecular weight, of the um, entire molecule, times 100. And 80% of ethane is carbon, so that would mean that the remaining 20% will be hydrogen. That's just a way that's going to allow us to, um, to make some comparisons in terms of percentages. Um, percentages. <clears throat> now, Let's talk a little bit about the mole. The mole is really what allows us to make the larger comparisons. All right, the mole is a counting number that we can associate with a certain mass, and that mass will be listed on our periodic table. Now, what counting number is the mole? We should know that the mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to 23rd. So if I say I have a mole of something, for example, if I had a mole of molecules, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. It's very similar to, it's a counting unit, very similar to a dozen. If I have 12 donuts, I know that I have a dozen donuts. Or if I had a mole of donuts, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd donuts. Now, 
this comparison will help us, or, or this number of molecules, the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecule, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, will help us make a larger comparison uh, or to that of grams. Okay, And this is how we make that comparison. We can say that one mole of carbon-12 has a mass of 12 grams. So if we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecule or, or atoms of carbon-12, we know that the mass is equal to 12 grams. And this number is what's reported on the periodic table, the same exact number we use for molecular weight or formula weight. We can use this to make some comparisons, particularly going from moles, which you know are the coefficients in our balanced chemical equation, to grams. Okay, We can go from grams to moles or from moles to grams by using the molar mass. And we get the molar mass from the periodic table. As a matter of fact, it's the exact same number we use for the formula weight, but with different units. Okay. And we can say that for every, for example, carbon atom, we have 12.0 grams of carbon per one mole of carbon. This will allow us to interchange between grams and moles. And here's a diagram that you've seen in the past, and I've used this quite often. Last year I had a heart around it because we can really consider the heart of chemistry to be the mole. If we can get back to the mole, we can make many different comparisons and conversions. Okay? We can go from grams to moles by using the molar mass. We get the molar mass from the periodic table. The units for molar mass is grams per mole, you should remember. Okay? Now, we can go from moles to formula units, or atoms, or molecules, by using Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd powers. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole, etc., um, etc. Et we can use that to go between formula units or moles or atoms. So we should be able to make these conversions interchangeably. Uh, molar relationships. One mole of atoms, ions, or molecules contains Avogadro's number of that poly, uh, particles. For example, one mole of barium chloride contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd uh, units of BaCl2, or formerly units of BaCl2, which we can relate the, that to the mass by using the molar mass from the periodic table and get a molar mass for that.